What's up people from steamy Florida? I've got a video for you here about uh, improvements to the Suskovich chicken tractor from the standard designs. So, uh, let's get to it. Uh, this is the most recent build. This is number four actually that I've made. Uh, I guess let's go through step by step starting with the frame. So here you will see that I have abandoned the lap joint construction everywhere. You don't really need it. Uh, it's plenty strong, but I've built the first one I built with lap joints. The three consecutive ones, I've skipped it. You really don't need it. If you glue and screw the joints, these are plenty strong. They will last forever. They're, they're really bulletproof. So other thing on the frame, I've beveled the edges on pretty much everything that except for the front so the front's not beveled it doesn't need to be really but the sides in the back right here these edges minimizes the contact with the ground especially when you're dragging less friction easier to move it same thing with the front of these skids this makes a huge improvement man it's tough to drag that hard edge through the grass and the dirt even if you're lifting up, it still catches. So definitely this, cutting this little piece off, huge improvement. Next thing on the frame is these two by twos on uh, pretty much everywhere. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 pieces in total. I think these are about 16 and a half inches. You don't need to be precise, just needs to block these out. So what this does is it improves the strength of the hardware cloth attachment and it prevents the chickens from getting stuck in the corners if you don't do the lap joints which is a thing they will get stuck in there and they will push their friends into there to be mean so don't let them do that and it'll make it stronger so put those two on each corner one on each brace another thing here with the poles or the conduit uh, i've gone for the hoop style you lose a little headroom but it's easier to do i tried bending these i tried uh, cutting them shorter and putting in corners uh, these are just much easier to do the hoops it's worth it and uh, it makes the structure i feel more strong the arch is a good distributor of weight and structure so these are drilled in using, I think these are called spade bits. It's this three quarter inch one right here. Drill in about an inch, stick them in, then you drill through the conduit into the wood and you put a screw in and that'll hold it. That makes it bulletproof right there. And when I'm finished with these, these will all be screwed together. They're just held together with zip ties right now because I'm waiting on the chicken wire and the hardware cloth. These hoops at the door, they screw into the wood on the other side. So these doors, the standard design, I think in the book is kind of crap. It's, it's not that great. I think the measurements are even wrong as written. I don't know if he's since corrected it in future editions, but uh, Anyways, uh, what I've done with this door, and I might have made it too tall, is I added six inches to the height. And it's a little too tall, but it's, it's fine because you don't have to put this extra little triangle up here on the top. You can just concentrate on the main structure. Um, and there's another section of this video where I'll show you the other door designs. So if you're not doing the lap joints, you can just fasten the door on the front and the back right here like that. So there's no laps here. You just put, I think this is, what part is this? Yeah, part G and F on top of part B, drill those in and then put the door on top of those. And it all works out, it all works out, you know, these. These pipes don't need to be perfect. They bend enough that, you know, you can screw them in back here 
It attaches, it's very rigid, especially once the wire goes on, makes it good and tight. And this door, unlike the uh, previously improved door, there's no thing it shuts against. It just shuts against these little corners here from the braces on the back instead of completely flat against it. We'll see how that fares as it weathers. These doors always kind of fall apart when they get wet. Uh, so I've really reinforced the heck out of this one. And... Uh, the reason is when they get wet, they twist and, and all these screws get ripped out. So we'll see. We'll see how that lasts. Here's the part right here. Parts K and L. And it's part K. It says make it five feet. Uh, but here's my nuts. <laughs> Too short. Extra three and a half inches. Uh, so, but in my case, I made it five foot six and a half on this one. We'll see how that goes. Uh, it might be too big. I might have to shorten it back up to the, the previous improved size. There's another thing you should probably use. T-square. Keep all your angles straight. And Tight Bond 3 Ultimate Wood Glue. It has electrolytes. That's good stuff. Waterproof. Alright, so these are the actually the first and the most recent chicken tractors I've built. Uh, right next to each other. So this first one you can see how I've done this frame up here There are these angled conduit connector pieces because I didn't have a bender and uh, I didn't want to risk manually bending them and screwing them up. So uh, I just did it that way. They were kind of expensive and uh, Yeah, you don't want expensive <laughs> and so this is built wrong, but I added this to the back. It's screwed in on these two rear braces here to hold the water bucket. So, we go in front. This is the standard issue door. I had to shorten the door to make it fit, but you can see there's that extra piece of chicken wire you got to put up there. So, this is the improved version that I've done. You can see that I ran the... Uh, this all the way up here. So this is in fact attached to the hoop for extra strength to hold the water bucket. And you can see the, the sides where it's stapled in. And this door is a little shorter than the other one. I probably should have built that one this way, but I didn't. Oh well. Um, I'll experiment with the doors, see if I can find a design I actually like. So here's one of those things you want to do after you've put in... Hello? After you've put in the wire, you want to put these corner gussets over the wire. That just gives you a little bit of extra security on your, uh, your hardware cloth. You might also see here that I ran the chicken wire around sideways instead of over it works but i think in the future i will just continue doing it you know over 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 three sections over the roof and then one section each on the front and back just because you know this is a little cleaner initially but after the fact you got to deal with all the bending and the securing of this garbage here makes it makes it difficult later on so yeah a little harder work up front It'll save you more effort later. Don't be cheap like I was here. Another thing here on the water buckets, uh, I've used, uh, I don't know what they're called, but it's like a nipple with a serrated edge and it's screwed in and I've had to use RTV sealant to make this like not leak. And these brass fittings are hard to find and they're expensive. Maybe not hard to find for you, but hard to find for me. Uh, and, you know, this is a flexible tube. You can just drill a hole that's a little smaller than the tube into the bucket and then just push this rubber hose right into the bucket and it will seal. You don't need any extra hardware. Go cheap. Go good. It works. Anyways, I hope this helps you and uh, 
I'll give another update once I get my chicken wire and my hardware cloth, which is shipping. So, good luck to you, and take care.